What's up? What's up? We're going to talk about my favorite thing, getting paid. Collecting more royalties, more ways to monetize your music. It's Track Sounds. Appreciate you checking out the channel. If you haven't seen part one of this, check it out above. Like, comment, subscribe, all that shit you hear all the time. And let's get into it. So if you haven't seen part one to this, this is just the second part of collecting your royalties. Part one, I'm gonna put right there. Question I have of the day though is what distributor are you using? Are you using DistroKid, CD Baby, oh TuneCore? Man, there's a million of them I feel like, but they're all really good. Let me know in the comments below which one you're using. I'm just kind of curious to you know get a feel for what everybody's using out there to drop their beats or their songs. So the first way I have to monetize your music that I didn't get into in the last video that's pretty big, Sound Exchange. This is your non-interactive streams like Spotify Free, Pandora, the stuff that people can't uh, click through basically until it, you know it's a free account that they go through. Sound Exchange collects all the non-interactive streaming royalties and puts them into your account and they're probably sitting there if you've never collected them before. I have a little quarrel with them being a producer because they make it hard for us to claim some of our portion. We have this certain type of paperwork and stuff. The spreadsheets suck. It's a tough word. But there's a lot of money in there, especially if you have pretty good streaming numbers. Definitely check it out. Sound Exchange. Second way I have SoundCloud.com, AudioMac.com, and the GOAT YouTube.com. You can get ad money on youtube.com. Once you hit 10,000 watch hours, I'm pretty sure, and a certain amount of subscribers, SoundCloud, you just gotta pay the $55 annual fee, and then you can monetize your music, upload unlimited music. Still a huge fan base on SoundCloud. I put a lot of beats on SoundCloud still, and songs. AudioMac.com is kind of SoundCloud's rival, or was at one time, but they kind of branched off, did some more things. They partnered with a lot of labels and other things like that making a lot of dope things happen over there and you can monetize your music. So make sure to check out all three if you have it. Third way I have is the Loom app. This is a new app that just came out not long ago. It's kind of like a streaming service and social media platform in one, but it can help you identify your super fan. You can drop a track early, maybe three days before you put it on Spotify or something like that. Have some of your fans go over there and they can basically tip you you know, gift you for dropping the track early. Their notes, which is what their currency is, convert way higher than streams uh, on any of the other platforms by far. The fourth tip I have, don't forget about TV, film, and video game syncs. Those are really big. There's a lot of opportunities out there that a lot of artists sleep on and producers. There's taxi.com. There's a few other, there's a few other paid services out there that are pretty good for submitting for different things. I've had some okay success with them. Nothing too groundbreaking, I'd say, but the best success I've had is going on to imdb.com. I think that's imdb. Whatever the one is with the, the database of all the movies and TV shows and things like that. Find out who some of the musical directors or program music program directors on some of these shows, smaller reality shows, anything like that for different networks, and see if you can get some see if you can get some music to them. A lot of times they're looking for music to come out now. You gotta learn how to arrange your music a little better to fit that, but it's a really great avenue. They pay way faster and have way bigger budgets most of the time than you see with a lot of other music things. So definitely don't sleep on TV, film, industry. And a lot of it is who you know finding a middleman. So don't be afraid to look out and find those music directors maybe on Twitter or Instagram. Do a little sleuth and they're out there. LinkedIn's another good one as well. And then I have two more tips though that are probably gonna help you monetize your music. We reach out to Twitch streamers and YouTube streamers as well and see if they need music. See if they need license, if they wanna license your music or possibly put your music up, collect the ad money and then put your link in the bio at the same time for the song and they'll be able to drive a lot more traffic to your song and you can get the streaming revenue from that. I think that's a really good way to collaborate and give value to each person, especially if, if the streamer has you know a pretty good following or something like that. Twitch is in a pretty big battle with a lot of labels and things like that for clearing songs and playing songs in the background. So you might be able to fill a void for some Twitch streamers that like your music and would love to put it in some other things or play it in the background, play their whole album maybe. And the last little tip I have is teespring.com. You can make merch, don't have to exactly print it up. People can, you can come up with some designs they can pay as you supply. So they want to have a big supply of t-shirts sitting around. 
It's a real good way to link it to your YouTube, TikTok, a few other channels like that. It's just another way that you can get merchandise and not have to spring maybe upfront for a whole bunch of things just to add another source of revenue. Because once you identify some of your super fans, they'll probably really want to spend a lot of money with you, whether you're a producer or an artist. So you got to be able to monetize on all different sides. So these are just another few quick tips and tricks to collect your royalties or monetize your music. Like I said, check out part one, check out all the rest of the videos I have, and let me know in the comments below if I missed anything or if you have any questions about some of the stuff I was talking about. Until next time, check you then.